they have to work on it. Yeah, they have to do it. Today is one of the most solemn days of the year. It's a day when we honor those who are no longer with us. Those who across generations stood to shield the rest of us from danger and from uncertain futures. And in doing so, they gave their lives. Since the founding of our nation, the names of these courageous men and women have been memorialized on monuments and in public, public squares across the nation. But in these busy days when time is the, the most precious of all, it's perhaps the most meaningful that we've chosen to gather here together this morning to remember them. They were driven to fight for what is right. They loved their flag, their country, and all that they stood for. Freedom, family, strength, and community. Whether they fought in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, or Afghanistan, they shared a passion for these values, values that are uniquely ours. Most were young, too young, but they selflessly gave their lives to stand up for the ideals that make us so proud to call ourselves Americans. We are all proud, proud to call home a country that fights for the rights of those who have none, gives refuge to the persecuted and the downtrodden, and gives voice to those who have no voice. We are proud to be from a country that has always led the world with an open heart and with a military that does not engage out of anger or vengeance, but out of a deep-seated commitment to justice, truth, and righteousness. The men and women remembered today are those who gave their lives to ensure that the rest of us could own this shining American legacy. We are not always perfect, but our country has always been a beacon of hope and light to those around the world. Let us recommit ourselves this morning to perpetuating this honorable mantle by demanding the best of ourselves, of each other, and of all of those who lead us. It is with gratitude and respect that we honor our fallen today. We grieve with their families and we cherish our country in a way that is deserving of their sacrifice. This year, as our nation continues to commemorate the, 20, the 50th anniversary of the war in Vietnam, I'd like to especially recognize all of those who gave their lives there. They are very much in our thoughts and prayers today. May God bless them, all of our fallen soldiers, their families, and may God bless these United States of America. Thank you, Representative Dykema. We will now have the placing of the wreaths done by the American Legion and the Scouts. Please join us in going to St. John Cemetery.
Please stand by for the placing of the wreaths by the American Legion and the Scouts. I would now like to welcome Father Cannon from St. John's Parish in Hopkinton to give a prayer. And good morning, and we're here at St. John's Cemetery to pray, to offer and pay homage to Almighty God, especially for our nation's war dead. I would like to acknowledge before us our veterans. We pray for the families of veterans. We continue to pray for their comfort and consolation. And so let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, for your many, many blessings, especially for the blessings you continue to bestow upon our great republic, for our liberties and religious freedoms that we enjoy. We give thanks to you for our nation's true heroes, our veterans who have served, sacrificed, fought, and died for our noble country. United States of America. Heavenly Father, loving and passionate one, we ask your special blessings upon those veterans who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our country, our homeland. Continue to bless their families with your comfort and consolation, the thoughtful and thankful prayers of a grateful people and nation. We ask your blessings upon all our veterans, past and present upon their families and loved ones. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And may God bless America. Thank you, Father Cannon. We will now have the gun salute, followed by the playing of taps by Hopkinton High School trumpetists, Jack, I mean, Zach Hollibro and David Inataki after we will make our way to um, Soldier's Mound at Mount Auburn. Three rounds, Three, two, Oh. 
We will now have. We will now head to Soldiers Mound at Mount Auburn. Hello, everyone. We will now welcome the Girl Scouts, who will give the salute to the flag. for the placing of the wreaths done by the American Legion and the Scouts. We will now have Hoppington High School Junior Tess Papagni come to recite the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who died here that the nation might live. This we may in all propriety do. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have hollowed it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will, will little note, nor long remember, what we say here, while it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, we here be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here give the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, and that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. Um, please welcome former selectman um, Len Holden to come and give some words. Good morning. I'm here this morning to dedicate the Gettysburg Address Plaque on the mound in front of us. I'd like to read a quote about the meaning of the Civil War by Ian Martin, an author and historian. The Civil War is at the heart of American story, a continuation of the events of 1776 when it was declared that all men are created equal, a testament to where we have been, who we are as a free people today. It is a story that Americans share no matter what the ancestry or heritage. It was the events at Gettysburg in July 1863 and Lincoln's immortal dedication to the fallen in, fallen in November that year that we look back upon as the pinnacle of, the, of what the war meant for all Americans. The Confederacy at the edge of victory, fighting courageously for the sudden cause, the Union defending the Republic from breaking apart and to end the scourge of slavery. The Civil War forged through fire and steel the country as we understand it today. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Holden. Uh, we will now welcome Reverend Sean Bowen from Barnabas Ministries, who will give a prayer. Thank you. The 600,000 or so who perished during the Civil War um, our tragic memory of a conflict internal to our country. Um, but this day, Memorial Day, 
evolved from Decoration Day, which started when women decorated the graves of men from both sides. So in that spirit of cooperation and unity, let's pray. Father, I thank you that we can take a moment and pause to reflect on those who have given so much for us. And Father, I thank you that here, we, the living, and the descendants of those can come and reflect on how love triumphs over indifference, how peace can triumph over conflict, and how compassion can triumph over intolerance and hate. So Father, I pray in that spirit that you would bind us together as a nation, as a people, or that we would go forward in the spirit of, of how Decoration Day started, where people who were injured on both sides came to honor those who had given and had fallen, and who had showed the ultimate love of giving themselves for a friend, even as Jesus did for us on the cross. So Father, thank you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Bowen. You will now have a gun salute, followed by the playing of taps by Hopkins High School trumpetist Tyler Rhodes and Zach Holborough. After, we will proceed to the Hopkinton Common. Okay. Um, we will have the placing of the wreath done by the scouts. We will now head to the Hopkinton Common. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hello everyone. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's Hopkinton Memorial Day ceremony. My name is Sophie Schneider and this is my third year as Master of Ceremonies for today's Memorial Day service. Memorial Day is a day dedicated to the brave men and women who gave their lives to ensure the freedom, protection, and survival of this very nation. It is essential that we celebrate and honor the sacrifice so that the memory of these heroes lives on. The Hopkinton community comes together today and every Memorial Day under the shared notion of appreciation for these brave individuals. I would also like to recognize Veteran Celebration Committee Chair Mike Whelan and Selectman John Catino, who is sitting on stage with me now for their part in making today possible and for their dedication to this town. Now with the help of writer Kelly Roper, I would like to read a poem to express how thankful I am. How do you measure a soldier's sacrifice? How do you measure a soldier's sacrifice? Is it by the number of friends and family left behind? Is it by the months or years given in service? How do you measure a soldier's courage? Is it by the number of obje objectives completed? Or is it by the number of missions served? How do you measure a soldier's honor? Is it for the, by the duty he or she volunteers for? Or is it by the number of medals earned? The simple truth is that these things are immeasurable as is the country's debt to all who serve and pay the price for the freedom of this nation. The Hopkinton High School Band, conducted by Craig Hay, will now perform God Bless America. Thank you. Please welcome Reverend David Melvin, chaplain with Brookhaven Hospice, who will give the invocation. Let's pray together. Holy and almighty God, creator of every people and place, ruler of all the nations, we gather here before you humbly and thankfully, glad of your presence amongst us. And together we acknowledge that you, and apart from you, we can do nothing. And that we need your constant grace and mercy as we seek to live in peace with those near and those far. And this morning, we thank you for the many who throughout the years have given all so that we might continue to live freely. Men and women from communities large and small, from city and country, of every race and religion, who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their country and who made it possible for us to openly gather today. 
We honor them for their willingness to give so that others might live, for their selflessness and commitment to duty, regardless of the cost. O oh Lord, may their actions be spurs to us and generations to come to live lives that are focused on giving for the sake of others and for their benefit. And we also thank you this day for those who also gave themselves to serve and defend our land and are still with us, veterans who fought on foreign soil alongside comrades who died. We honor them for all they have done and for all they continue to do to keep us all mindful of the many benefits we enjoy as citizens of this country. And we pray for the men and women who currently serve in the many branches of military service, wherever they may be, in places of conflict or on the ready to go wherever needed. Bless them and their families, keep them safe, keep them diligent, and may they serve well wherever duty may call them. And so, God of the universe, Lord of time and space, come now upon us. Give us hearts of gratitude for the sacrifices made on our behalf. Move us and strengthen us to live so that the ideals we hold forth might be seen in us. May those who speak to us this day inspire within us a new commitment to seek peace. And we look forward in faith to that day when there will be war no more. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Melvin. We will now have the placing of the four wreaths done by the American Legion and the Scouts. Next, we'll have Hoppington High School junior Tess Papagni come to give the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We come to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who died here, that the nation might live. 
this we may in all propriety do. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have hallowed it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, while it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, we here be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, and that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Now please welcome Chairman of Selectmen, Claire Wright, who will give her remarks. Good morning, Hopkinton. Today is a solemn and special day, Memorial Day, a day where we honor and remember those brave members of our armed forces who made the ultimate sacrifice those who gave their lives so that we may breathe free. Our nation bows its head today in solemn remembrance and thanks, recognizing that all the freedoms we enjoy, we would not have without those heroes. Every Memorial Day is a special time, and year after year, Hopkinton turns out in magnificent form. But this year, Memorial Day 2018, has particular significance. It marks a century since the close of World War I, 50 years since Vietnam. But you see also, today marks America's 150th anniversary of the establishment of a National Memorial Day. When our national agony that was the Civil War finally ended in 1865, 620,000 had lost their lives. 3% of the population, 3 million had served. In Hopkinton, 478 men out of a total male population in 1860 of 2,300 served in the Civil War. Of these 478, 47% were either wounded, disabled, killed in action, or died of disease. Hopkinton paid a terrible price. So in 1868, General John Logan, who was the Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, established Memorial Day, a national day of remembrance so that these heroes and those throughout history should never be forgotten. And today, with humble gratitude, we mark 150 years of remembering their supreme sacrifice. Throughout the ages and in all wars, the men and women of Hopkinton have answered the call. Captain John Howe, who led the West Company of Hopkinton Militiamen down to Lexington and Concord in, in April of 1775. Charles Phillips, killed at the Battle of Third Winchester, which snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, not only for the Union, but for Abraham Lincoln, assuring his reelection and thus saving the cause of freedom for all men. Men like Simeon Ward, Henry Gibson, Manlius Comey, who perished in Andersonville and Libby prisons. Our POWs today, for whom the sad black flag still hangs. Curtis Cheney died in the spearhead December 25, 1944. 
all our soldiers from two world wars, whose names on our bronze memorials bear the star of sacrifice, and so many more. In the nation's darkest hour, and in the world's darkest hour, America's heroes have been there, never in the cause of conquest, always in the cause of freedom. Inscribed at the American Cemetery in Normandy are these words, if ever proof were needed that we fought for a cause and not for conquest, it could be found in these cemeteries. Here was our only conquest. All we asked was enough soil in which to bury our gallant dead. So today, we remember and thank those thousands upon thousands throughout our nation's history who died so that freedom might live. At the height of the war effort in World War II, First Infantry Sergeant John Ellery remarked, you can manufacture weapons and you can buy ammunition, but you can't buy valor and you can't pull heroes off an assembly line. We'll soon close our ceremonies today, but we can keep the spirit of Memorial Day in our hearts all year long. If you see a broken or fallen flag on a veteran's grave, put it back. If you see a darkened, soiled veteran's stone, make it stand dignified and proud again with the TLC of a little water and a soft bristle brush. If you see a tattered American flag, replace it. And for those brave ones who are in harm's way today, wherever they may be, keep them in your prayers. On this and every day, let us never, ever forget those who gave the last full measure of devotion. Thank you, Selectman Wright. Please stand by and listen as the Hobbiton High School Band plays America the Beautiful.
Mobley will now come to introduce our keynote speaker. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jim Robley. I'm the vice chairman of the town's veteran celebration committee. Uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to do is apologize to anybody who got wet with the sprinklers. Mike, I guess we missed, never missed that one before. <laughs> Put it on the list. So it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for this year. Second Lieutenant Tyler Sullivan is the Airborne Warning and Control Systems Computer Network Upgrade Budget Analyst at Hanscom Air Force Base. As the lead financial analyst, Lieutenant Sullivan maintains a $100 million program through financial plans of program requirements. He researches and analyzes data trends, budget formulation, and cost estimates for airborne warning and control systems programs, and also provides critical decision support through program reviews and ensures adequate funds are available for program requirements across a diverse $2.6 billion portfolio. Lieutenant Sullivan is also an officer in charge with the Patriot Honor Guard. He leads funeral honors for a 78,000 mile era of responsibility and 1.2 million veteran population. So we certainly thank him for that. Prior to commissioning as a Lieutenant, he served as an Air Force Staff Sergeant, subject matter expert on Air Force personnel programs to the Commander, Air Force Element, Camp Smith Marine Corps Base. And Lieutenant Sullivan was also the Joint Service Color Guard Coordinator and non-commissioned officer in charge during this assignment. He managed 75 team members across all branches of service and supported all Joint Service Color Guard tasks for the Commander Headquarters U.S. Pacific Command. Lieutenant Sullivan has a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration Management and Human Resources. He has served since August of 2006 in a number of locations including Shepard Air Force Base in Texas, with the 380th Air Expeditionary Wing, El Defra Air Base, United Arab Emirates, Camp Smith, Hawaii, and currently at Hanscom Air Force Base in Bedford. Lieutenant Sullivan has earned the Joint Service Commendation Medal with one bronze oak leaf cluster, Joint Service Achievement Medal, Air Force Achievement Medal, and the 82nd Training Wing Airman of the Year for the year 2008. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Sullivan. Well, good morning, everyone. That was a lot about me, um, but what I'd really like to say that's the most important thing to me today is I had absolutely no idea how emotional this was gonna be. I've been to several, several Memorial Day ceremonies and I have yet to experience something quite this connected where everyone involved, everyone out here today has some type of feeling that they understand with regard to Memorial Day, what it means to them, what it means to this community. Historically speaking, many of you know how much Hopkinton has to to connect to Memorial Day from the very beginning. That is such a blessing. Not too many people can share in that deep of a connection. So first of all, I'd like to say thank you for you, for your families, for your relatives, for everyone that's ever been involved in the military service, anyone that's ever had to give their life or give some of their life in support of our nation in building our nation. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for your families, we wouldn't be here today to celebrate the freedoms that we all get to enjoy. So I'd like to say that first and thank you for that. Secondly, I am so blessed to be here. This was not my, I guess my first choice of places to be. Um, the military takes you to so many different locations all over the world. A lot of the times you're not expecting to, to achieve certain things or appreciate certain things, but I just got selected to do something that I am so excited about. I get to be the honor guard officer in charge for all of the Northeast, which means that my job is going to be to celebrate in our veterans' lives and everything they gave to this nation. I am so excited to do that, I can't even begin to explain to you. This is something that has been important to me since I was about 13 years old. 
go back to Memorial Day and what it means to each one of us, I've already got to share with some of you today what it means to you. Some of you have, have expressed to me that certain family members of yours were involved in certain conflicts and even gave your lives or gave their lives in support of this nation. A lot of us can understand what sacrifice means. A lot of us understand what it means to, to give, whether it's to give time in school or give time to a job or to give time for your family. We understand those little sacrifices. But I encourage you today to seek as much empathy as you can for those family members and those friends that have lost someone in support of a conflict that also supports our freedoms. Because our ability to wake up in this nation and enjoy everything that we get to enjoy every single day, the things that we take for granted every single day, whether we mean to or not, every little simple thing that we get in this country, we have to appreciate it today. If you know someone who has served or someone who has given their life, talk about them today. Take time to remember them today. Remember those lives who we've lost, our friends and family. Remember what they stood for. Remember their passions, their dreams, the life that they would have lived if they were here with us today. Take pride in that person today because they gave the ultimate sacrifice. We are all still here. We are all still standing here and enjoying our lives. We have yet to ever have to give that kind of sacrifice. So please take today to appreciate those people as I will appreciate those people. If you have a story to share and you don't know who to share it with, please share it with me because I love to hear it. I love to hear it. I've already heard three this morning of stories that are just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And those people will live on forever in our hearts and minds, forever. And we will appreciate more and more the simple freedoms that we take for granted every single day. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for celebrating in this day with us. You've all done a wonderful job. And, and I am just thankful to be a part of this today. Thank you. Thank you, Second, um, Second Lieutenant Sullivan. We'll now have our final playing of taps. Um, we'll now have our final um, gun salute by Old Guard New England, followed by the playing of taps by HHS trumpetists David Nataki and Jack Brennan.
Now please join the Hobbinsian High School Band while they play the national anthem as the flag is raised. Thank you so much for coming to today's Memorial Day service. Please join us for a light lunch at St. John's Parish on Church Street right now. Thank you.